Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. This video has been a long time coming. This has been since I've had the Steam Deck during the preview period, so in February when just Linus, myself, and Gamers Nexus had it. I knew then that the total system power was wrong here. Uh, ultimately, the TDP on the Steam Deck is wrong. Now, maybe that's a little bit harsh to say. It's abnormal. It's Non-conformal, it's unorthodox, all those words that mean non-standard, uh, that is what the TDP is on the Steam Deck. We need to back up here just a second because when I was doing this, even in the preview period, it wasn't just myself that could see this. Once the video data came out and all the data came out, even people that are in the scene knew that the total system power on the Steam Deck was abnormally high. 15 watt TDP and taking nearly 28 watt total system power is abnormally high. And that's how both Gamers Nexus and I arrived at 90 minutes of battery life. You just do the simple math on the battery, you get 90 minutes, a little bit less. So that's how you get that number. And the reason is because it's abnormally high. So I couldn't say anything at the moment because I didn't have enough information. This was the only device that I had that was RDNA2, LPDDR5. I needed to know new information. In comes the GPU Win Max 2. Now I was fortunate enough to have a prototype. The other fortunate bit, a probably unfortunate bit, is that both of these devices, the GPU Win Max 2 prototype and the Steam Deck, are in absolute lockstep. What that means is if I were to set this at 15 watt, it takes 28 watts of total system power. If I set this at 5 watt TDP, it takes 12.5 watts of total system power, and that's at full brightness. On both platforms, if I put the Steam Deck at full brightness and the GPU Max 2 prototype at full brightness, they both take around 12 and a half watts total system power. Even if I were to do medium brightness, I get about 11 and a half watts total system power. So people often kind of misconstrue this. They think because the GPU Max 2 has a 10.1 inch screen, a much larger screen than the Steam Deck, that it's gonna take more power. That's not the case. In fact, 14 inch and 17 inch laptops have total, the same total system power as these devices do. It's not the display, it's the backlight that is going to be the power characteristics of it, which is why HDR displays take tremendously more power. Very quickly, in comparison, typical HDR mobile displays take around 15 watts. The most efficient ones I've seen are around 10 watts. That's three to five times more power than these take at max brightness. So this is one of the reasons why we kind of really wouldn't want HDR on a mobile platform unless they made it unreal efficient where they have to get down to the backlight levels of where it is now. In my opinion, I would prefer to go the opposite direction and just have non HDR and just even better power efficiency, but that's a whole other thing and I digress. Anyway, so this is enter step one of where I was, uh, drawing a wrong conclusion, but I only had the data available to me at the time. So the Steam Deck is a Zen 2 RDNA 2 TSMC 7 nanometer product. The GPD Max 2 prototype is a Zen 3 RDNA 2 TSMC 6 nanometer product. If the TDP on both of these are exactly the same, and they're on slightly different process nodes and different CPUs altogether in different architectures, but the TDP is still holding up to be the same, I have to respect that the TDP is reporting correctly, which means that there is external factors that are, are the cause of this increased total system power. The only common denominator was LPDDR5. The other point to note here is that the Steam Deck is LPDDR5 5500, and the uh, GPU Win Max 2 is LPDDR6400. All the documentation says that to hit 6400 MT, we need to boost voltage. In all of my testing, the only time that it appears that LPDDR5 6400 is taking more power is when we really start climbing up to about 20 watt, 25 watt. That's when there's a difference in total system power. But before then, it's kind of the same as LPDDR5500. So that's one interesting bit, but ultimately, it, the only foundation that I had was LPDDR5 at a baseline takes more power than LPDDR4 because that's the only thing I had. However, in comes my GPD Win Max 2 production model. Now, the GPD Win Max 2 production model, remember again, back to the beginning, the Steam Deck at 15 watt is taking around 28 watt, 27 to 28 watt total system power, 90 minutes of battery life. On my GPD Win Max 2 production unit, 15 watt TDP, max brightness, I'm taking 24 watts total, nearly three to four watts less than the Steam Deck. 
at 15 watt TDP. What in the world is going on there? Something must have changed. What is going on? So then I had my Eureka moment back during the preview period. We can see the sensor data directly from this. And if we take a look at the sensor data, you can, so you can see it clear as day. It says cap 15 watt. Yet when I look at the sensor, you can see it's consistently going over 15 watt, 20 watt, 19 watt, 18 watt. It's constantly going over and sometimes going under. Okay, so if I can record this data, how often is this happening? Now, this is the interesting part of the data and where all of this irregularity comes from. And it all has to do with how AMD has different modes to calculate TDP. So if we take a look at the Steam Deck and I just collect nearly 70,000 samples of that sensor data, if we were to break that data down into a graph, this is what the data looks like. This may seem a little complicated here, but I'm just going to, if you take a look at the 15 here, 15 means from the sensor data, it is running at 15 watts. During this sample period, it ran at 15 watts 11% of the time. Okay? So that's how you can interpret this data. Every one of these numbers is the TDP, and then you can see the percentage of time that it was at that wattage. Okay? So 50% of the time, the Steam Deck, when at 15 watt TDP, is using 15 watts or less. The other 50% of the time, it's using 16 watts or more. So the what happens here is that the TDP, when you average it out, is like 15.5 watts. So it is still technically averaging 15 watt TDP, but it is overshooting and bursting over 15 watt enough times that it is technically a higher TDP compared to what we are all used to. And I have a graph to give you an idea of what that looks like in a moment. Let's take a look at the sensor data from the GPU and Max 2 prototype. If you take a look at the data, 15 watts was used only 12.2% of the time. Again, half of the time that I was doing this test, 50% of the time, it was 15 watts or less. However, the other 50% of the time, it was 16 watts or greater. All right, so now we have this information of my prototype and my Steam Deck operating the same and also having the same characteristics when we directly probe the sensor data. How does that look when we compare it to my production model? You can see it's outlandishly different. Both 15 watt and 14 watt are around 30% of where the TDP is most often. 75% of the time on my production model, the wattage actually used is 15 watts or less. 25% of the time, it's 16 watts or greater. And this is the entire reason why we are seeing this abnormally high total system power. It's not LPDDR5. It's literally two different profiles that AMD has to determine TDP. What we see is an aggressive average for the Steam Deck and my GPU MX2 prototype. And we see a conservative average when we take a look at my WinMax 2 production model, as well as the IA Neo 2. So, okay, now we know that it's not LPDR5, and it's actually just how AMD is calculating this. What is the actual result in reality? So this is a benchmark. I'm using the Heaven Unigen benchmark. I'm running at 800p ultra extreme settings, and I tested at every wattage. And you can see the blue graph, which is my GPU WinMax 2 prototype, but it aligns with what the Steam Deck does versus the red one, which is my production GPU WinMax 2 and is the same as the INEO 2. And if we take a close look, you can see that 15 watt TDP performs exactly the same as 19 watt TDP on production models. And this you can kind of line up yourself if you just take a look at this graph, see where the blue line lines up with the red line watts ahead. And this goes further, right? Like if I were to just run the GPU Max 2 prototype or the production at higher TDPs, I have the same benchmark result, but wildly different TDPs and using the same total system power. And this is why total system power actually is the more important metric to look at here, is that 
TDP on these platforms is one thing, but because AMD has multiple ways of determining TDP, the more important thing that we should always be looking at is total system power. That's why I have always shown my total system power in every video that I've done. It's just so that you can see it. And then whenever a new device comes out, we have a, an easier place to compare against. That's pretty much the end of the story. This has been not for everyone, but there have been a few people like all of us that are on scene, basically all of my subscribers. You guys are like the hardcore group that see this stuff. We can like texturally see when something is off compared to previous models. So this is the answer to the question of why we're seeing higher total system power on the Steam Deck as well as my WinMax 2 prototype. It's because there is effectively, at this moment, two different ways that AMD is calculating TDP. Now, what should Valve do about this? Absolutely nothing. There's nothing that we want Valve to do about this because effectively 15 watt TDP on the Steam Deck is in reality 19 watt TDP to what we're all used to, which means that you're getting more bang for your buck even at that 15 watt cap. Now you might be thinking, well, if it was 15 watt and we're actually at 19 watt, how does that make sense? Isn't that just taking all the power? The answer is no. The actual TDP on the Steam Deck is around 30 watt. It would need 30 watts in its package to achieve max clocks on everything. That's CPU, you need around 15 watts, 14 watts and change to get max 3.5 gigahertz on all four cores. To hit 1.6 gigahertz on the GPU, you need 10 to 11 watts of power. So now you're at 26 watts. And then don't forget there's Uncore, where the memory controller and all the other parts live. That takes another three to four watts. We are looking at 30 watts in total that would be needed to drive the Steam Deck all the way. Now, the heat if the heatsink can handle it is another question, which it probably can't, but that is one of the reasons why we are actually getting more performance when we actually push more wattage into it. There are massive diminishing returns after that, so it's not really like it's all that worth it. At 30 watt TDP, we'd probably be around 40 watt total, which means you'd have one hour of battery life on the Steam Deck, which is totally not worth it. Uh, also, the gains that you get out of be very little. It would only really be beneficial when you were docked with the machine, but it, the heatsink most likely can't handle it. So that's uh, besides the point. Anyway, that's where I wanted to end this thing. Uh, I answered the question of why we're seeing what we're happening. Valve really doesn't have to do anything here. It is still fundamentally unorthodox how the TDP is being calculated on the Steam Deck. Ultimately, that's good for us because we're getting more power out of it. So that's it. Um, that answers the question that I've been asking since February of 2022. I'm actually really happy that this is answered. It's not LPDDR5. It's the way that AMD is calculating the TDP. As always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.